is of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Grace is faithfulness. Give him praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Will you ask him this morning to speak to you in person, speak to you directly, speak to you specifically, open new chapters to your life by the encounter with his word this morning. He sent a word into Jacob. He turned his life around 360 degrees. Now, Jesus, speak to me directly this morning. Jesus, speak to me directly this morning. Speak to me in person today. Let your sent word turn my life around. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are gathered again this great day at the feet of Jesus to receive of him. Now we are all seated here. Cause your word to locate each one. Amen. Let the word of each one come through this morning. Amen. The same way the word of Joseph came and everything turned, now, let the word of each one locate him this morning. Yeah. On this covenant day of breakthrough, let there come an end to every form of breakdown. Yeah. Let every form of business stagnation, frustration, and failure come to an end. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. It's my new dawn era. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be seated. Assessing God's plan for your life from his book. This teaching series suggests that God's plan for us as individuals is in his book called the Bible. Our inheritance and redemption is as contained in the holy word of God. At chapter 20, verse 32, Paul said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to deliver to you your inheritance among them that are sanctified. So our inheritance is locked up in the book, and by revelation, we take delivery of them. Because we can only assess as much as our eyes can see. Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 and 15. He said to Abraham, lift up now thy eyes from the place where thou art, and look northward, southward, eastward, and westward, for all the land which thou seest unto you will I give it. It takes revelation to assess our possession in Christ. Until we can see it, God cannot give it. And in the prophetic focus for the month, we try to establish the fact that redemption has made every one of us a child of destiny, a glorious destiny, an enviable destiny, a mountaintop destiny, a prosperous destiny, so we have this in Christ, but until this is revealed to you as a person, you cannot assess it. Until you and I can see it, we cannot possess it. And the reason for reading books and listening to tapes and all that is so we can see what we are yet to see and then possess what belongs to us that we have not been able to see and so we couldn't possess them.
This morning, we just look at three of them as we proceed. From the Bible, we understand that every child of God is a child of destiny. The people he has predestinated, he has called. The people he has called, he has justified. And the people he has justified, he has glorified. So we are predestinated to be glorified. Every child of God is a child of predestination. That implies a child of destiny. So it's not permitted to live like a destitute. It's a child of destiny. Not just destiny, but a glorious destiny. An enviable destiny. A pace setting destiny. Say with me, I'm a child of destiny. I cannot afford to live as a destitute. I'm a child of destiny. I carry an enviable destiny on my life. After the order of Isaac, I'm a child of destiny. I carry a prosperous destiny on my life. After the order of Abraham, I'm a child of destiny. I refuse to live as a destitute. Now, nothing keeps you going, smiling and rejoicing than knowing what God has ordained for you. The Bible says, Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despised the shame, and now he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He could see it. So the temporary challenges could not get him off. You can't see a future and still be depressed. When someone is depressed, you tell them, look, where they are slave, there is hope. He can't see anything more. That's why he's depressed. You can't see God's glorious plan for you. You can't see God's enviable destiny for you and still be depressed. Therefore, today marks the end of every siege of depression on your life. Yeah. Number two, every child of God is redeemed for exploits. Out of this world, order of accomplishment. Redeemed for exploits. is redeemed as the light of the world. As it said on a heat that cannot be hidden. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A citizen on a heat that cannot be hidden. Redeemed for exploit. Of all born of women, there is none as great as John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. Redeemed for exploits. Carrying potentials above all the Old Testament saints that you know about. Redeemed for outstanding accomplishment in your pursuit. The light of the world connotes a pace setter, a pathfinder, a trailblazer. Showing others the way to go. Jesus speaking said, whosoever believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do. John 14, 12. He blew the world open in three and a half years. And the world keeps on following Emma's day tomorrow. And as the Father has sent me, so send I you. That's what he said. So we have been redeemed for exploits, accomplishing things that eyes have not seen or ears heard. It has entered the heart of any man. First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. 
you have been redeemed for exploit. It's also important for us to know that every child of God is redeemed for glory and honor, not shame and reproach. No more shame. No more reproach on your life. He said, according to his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us unto glory and virtue. Second Peter 1, 3. No more shame. No more reproach. On your life. In your family. In your business. In your career. But what must I do to actualize this colorful destiny? Knowing what's available is one, knowing how to assess is another. Knowing what is available without knowing how to assess it keeps you frustrated. To become a child of destiny, you must be saved. Praise God. Until you are saved, you are not a child of destiny. You are a child of chance. Anything can happen at any time. But if you check that Romans chapter 8 and verse 29 and 30, you see that our glorious destiny is rooted in our being justified by the blood of Jesus. And that is salvation. Now, to command exploit, you must be in active love with Jesus. Eyes have no sin, ears have no heart. What God has reserved for them that love him. So all true lovers of Christ end up as commanders of exploits. All true lovers. And Solomon loved the Lord. And he became wiser than all men. And all the kings of the earth came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. David, a man after God's own heart, became a national hero at the age of 17. The love of God is the launching pad into realms of exploits. Not that I loved him, but to stay in love. You stay in love to remain in command of exploit. You stay in love. Do you love me? Yes, Lord. Now, go after my lamb. Prove that you do. Do you love me? Give to my cause. He said, this do to prove the sincerity of your love. Your love for God and my love for God is not theoretical. Go after souls. Amen. Give to the cause of the gospel to prove that you love him. It's not I love you more than anyone. That's okay. But prove it. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 8. He said, this do to prove the sincerity of your love. You, you, you have to do that to prove the sincerity. Not everybody who claims to love God are sincere. Not everybody is sincere. Amen. So prove that you love him. By loving what he loves most, love the salvation of the souls of men. Give to the cause of the gospel. Give to the poor around you. And then you are proving the sincerity of your love. Redeemed for glory and honor. Yes. Be concerned about the state of the unsaved. That's what it says in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. And now, verse 18, he said, I will gather them that are of sorrowful heart, who are of thee, to whom the reproach of the land was a burden. They, are, they carry my passion for the state of of God's people. They carry a passion for my heart. And what will I do in return? Verse 19. He said, Behold, at that time, 
I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that hurted, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Yeah. Now that follows your passion to see God's glory, to see God's beauty come upon God's people. So for you to actualize that destiny of no shame, no reproach, you must carry a passion for God and for the things that matter to him. Amen. We saw God did that in the life of um, Nehemiah. He was restless concerning the state of those who were left of captivity in Jerusalem and the state of the city. And got into prayer and fasting for certain days. Some say it's three weeks. Praise God. And then uh, from that, from a cup bearer, a governor emerged and got him praise and fame in the land where he had been put to shame. He was carried away captive. They were choosing, they were choosing those that are fair enough to serve as domestic staff in the king's palace. So, all the insult, are you not a slave? Were there. But suddenly, he began to hold meetings with the king that he used to serve. Amen. They sat around the same conference table when the kings of the earth meet. Praise God. Overnight, by a genuine passion for the things that matter most to God, God removed shame and reproof from his life. Now, this is your opportunity to plug into what God has ordained for you in destiny by pressing hard to prove the sincerity of your love and praying for souls to be saved and praying for the saved to be established in the faith and giving of his resources at your disposal for the promotion of his kingdom. Then you find yourself actualizing these amazing wonders. This is so important. Nothing of value is ever free. Value is a function of cost. You can't get more out of anything that you're willing to pay for it. You can't get more out of anything that you're willing to pay for it. There are vehicles in town that you can buy for 50000 but it won't move. But it's also a vehicle. You can tell your friend, I just bought a vehicle. Say, where is it? It's still in the motor mechanic. I'm looking for a twin vehicle to help me do it. Now, it's a vehicle. Amen. There are those who buy 100000 It can serve you for two weeks. But it was packaged for someone to carry it away so it can carry with the trouble. And then the address you buy with I mean, a thousand, I mean, a million naira, that will take you for some time. Amen. Because things have changed. I told you humorously, my first car, I sold it 1,000 naira. <laughs> and then the children asked me, does he have tires? I said, four good tires. <laughs> Amen. So when someone was asking me to buy a pair of shoes for 700, I said, God forbid. <laughs> I sold my car with four tires. <laughs> no, things have changed. But you see, I'm trying to help you see that you can't accomplish, you can't engender more value than you are willing to pay. You want a glorious destiny, then you must pay a glorious price. Amen. You can't sit down wishing. We are in the days of great things, but it takes taking great steps to arrive there. You don't sit down for great things to happen. Yes, you take great steps to make great things happen. Amen. You won't take no step. You won't see no, nothing. You just you need to take great steps to make great things happen. So prove the sincerity of your love by all means. And I mean by godly means. 
and engage. Look at the family that came in here now. Jesus, I'm going to serve you. They were praying, and he was still going to uh, sanctuary keepers. Jesus, you clean up my life as I clean your house. Jesus, won't you pay me because you pay everyone that serves you? Won't you pay me? The month is over. Pay me now, Jesus. And she was confirmed pregnant. He said she was serving with a reward mentality. With what? There are some who are just serving. They don't know why they are serving. They're just serving. You know, they say we should serve. You know, I belong to four groups. I belong to five groups. They say, what was the matter? That's the matter. I don't know more than that. We must. Every steward is a partaker of his hope. What you don't know exists, you never take hold of. We must know that God does not rob his servants, he pays them. Your pay year is here. In the name of Jesus. On this covenant day of business breakthrough, I want us to first recognize that our next level of breakthrough demands that we know better than we do now. That young man came to Jesus in Mark chapter 10 and verse 17 to 21. Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? I've been at the same spot for some time. And Jesus said to him, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered, Master, all this I've done, observed from my youth. Then he said to him, one thing thou lackest, most of the time we celebrate what we know at the expense of what we don't know. It is what we know that determines where we are now. Until we know better, we won't change position. One thing thou lackest. Can I hear you ask, say to Jesus, Lord Jesus, show me one thing that I lack for my next levels of breakthrough. Show me the one thing that I lack. Now we saw the same episode repeated in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16 to 22. In verse 20 particularly he said, but what lack I yet? That is the great access to revelation. What lack I yet? Now those who claim they have done all that they should do, they don't change position. You have done all that you know, but there's still one thing you lack to make things work. What lack I yet? It could be a very, very simple thing, but what lack I yet? There are some individuals, they have no problem with covenant practice, but they have problem with attitude. They complain about everything. And by complaining, you complicate your matters. The people complained and it displeased God. I mean, it, and when the people complained, Numbers 11, 1, and the Lord had it and his anger was kindled. You complain, you complain a lot. You complain a lot. And all you are trying to do is according to you to say your mind. Now your mind is complicating your matter. Why don't you renew your mind? see anything God is doing. We say, you know what? You claim he's not doing that you can't see. God has not done anything for me and then you are still on your feet. You came to church this morning. You ate last night. Mm. In fact, you almost slept under your own roof. Mm. Abba. Mm. You are not squatting. Now, in case you are squatting, thank God you have somewhere to squat. Mm. You better stop complaining so you stop complicating your matters. Your business is not down because of any harsh economy. You are harsh against yourself. You are harsh against the truth. The truth is not strong enough to determine your behavior. Don't just choose your mind. Now, can I tell you this? I never complained when this church was full. 
When we were two, there were only two in one midway service, I never complained. Until you stop complaining, the way forward is not in view. You better wake up now, be free from every murmuring and complaining spirit. Yeah. We once lived as a family in the church office. Not for one month, not for two months, sir. Not for 10 months. Only one toilet. Zero complaint. No opportunity for it. Oh, now you complain about it. God gave you a car, you are complaining. Look at the steering of this car. Go and make another one. You see, a simple, simple thing. Many, many winners are granted today because of unending complaints. And they are complaining against God. God, I think you should be smarter. You don't know me. The same day this commission was born is when I joined. <laughs> and see me now. He said, I can't see you. Give me glasses. <laughs> Amen. Be free today from the spirit of murmuring and complaining. Amen. May every way anyone has suffered from this foul spirit, may the Lord Jesus and his mercy restore you today. Amen. May no one here suffer the anger of the Lord again in his life. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. First Corinthians 10 10. Complaining complicates matter. Murmuring destroys. It messes up whatever we're doing. What lack I yet? Like I said, we often celebrate what we know at the expense of what we don't know, and that is what has kept us at the same spot. We must begin to crave for what we lack for our next levels of breakthrough. Every breakthrough in the kingdom is rooted in word encounters. God just speaks to you and something bursts out. Now, I've said something now this morning. Anybody who received that and believed it, is free forever from complaining and murmuring. Yeah. You know, this heavy, prosperous ministry had 18,400 naira as total income for the year 1984. Hello? Not 1924. 1984. Just yesterday. Praise God. We had our first Instrument, musical instruments, 1986, November. What? So if you come in to sing in our church, you carry your equipment to come. When you are going, you carry your equipment, go. Then we start clapping and stamping our feet on the floor and praising God and celebrating. I never prayed one day for music equipment. He sent me to go and preach the word of faith, not to go and play music. It's not a concern. Lord Jesus, as you bring them, feed them today. Feed them with your word. Life can be very exciting when you're walking in the light of scriptures. Light is sweet. Light is sweet. The first day my wife came to the church in Kaduna, because we were then in the Lord, and the first day she came, we were 21. We were two above the previous Sunday. Celebration, sir. Celebration. She couldn't believe that service was over. She thought we were doing Sunday school. <laughs> Service was over. I was sweating all over, <laughs> preaching my life out. Amen. <laughs> no complaint. I was going to a meeting and my car nose dived. You know, Vito has a way of caving in. Okay. The car caved in. I just left it and took a taxi and went. Now, my mind was so away from it that when we finished the meeting, I was going to the car park. And because I was doing some counseling, when I look forward, I can't see the car. I said, oh no, the car is on the road. <laughs> Amen. No time. No 
room for him. Thank you, Jesus. Who dashed monkey banana? Mm. How did I get a car to ride? Amen. You better turn off. Some great opportunities are here. You won't lose your own. Amen. Put your right hand on your chest and free yourself from everything that murmurs and complains. Free yourself from it. No more complications. No more stagnation. No more frustration. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Now, put your point of contact underneath your seat. Anything you brought into church this morning as point of contact for your business, there shall be continuous emission of that breakthrough anointing upon this commission into those items, and it will show immediately. It will show immediately. As the word is going forth, enter into your heart, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going into those materials and changing your stories out there forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please take every prophetic instruction serious because it is for your change of story. Can I hear your amen? amen? You don't have any point of contact, write what you do, put it underneath the seat where you are is a breakthrough in business covenant day. Something is turning in your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at a few covenant forces of breakthrough. We must continue to engage in thanksgiving as a lifestyle for continuous and unending breakthroughs we must continue to engage in thanksgiving as a lifestyle, living a life of thanksgiving, ever grateful, ever growing, ever breaking forth. Jesus was faced with the task of feeding 5,000 men, minus women and children, and he had three, I mean, two loaves and five fishes. And the people said, the disciples said, what is this among so many? What will this do? He said, you will know now. Made them sit down in the 50s. And then he engaged the mystery of thanksgiving. Father, I thank you. After he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. What are you distributing? It has multiplied. Thanksgiving is a covenant multiplier of results. You want breakthrough in multiplied dimensions? Let thanksgiving become your new lifestyle. You thank God for one, it becomes two. of gratitude, a genuine heart of gratitude, a genuine heart. Now, <laughs> i tell you this story. We were in Abba for a crusade many years ago, 1987, I think, and then it was the raw confrontation of hell. We had hired this public address system for the crusade instead of carrying things from Kaduna. And then a few minutes to the time, we had paid. They said they are not giving us again. Ah. 
a job. <laughs> so they carried their thing away at a time we could not make any arrangement for an alternative. So, I'm so difficult to discourage. <laughs> when they say, how are we going to, I say, just let's get there. Father, thank you. So the few people that were there, we joined hands together. And I prayed and preached in prayer so that nobody would go. <laughs> we joined our hands so you can't lose your hand. <laughs> and that tells you how many we were. Okay. Now, we got to the hotel and I said to them, if anybody complains here, that's the last crusade we'll have. But I said, I tell you by the word of the Lord, when next we come to town, there'll be no room. The mo when we got there next, sir, people were sitting there at 12. 12 noon for an evening meeting. Thank you, Jesus. If we had complained, that would be the end. This meeting will not be here today. You complain tomorrow. Father, thank you that we got here safely. Thank you that we got about 16 people out there. Thank nobody like you. So, we drove back rejoicing. Hallelujah. You would think we failed. We didn't fail. Yes, we have planted a seed for a greater tomorrow. Hallelujah. By giving God thanks. Hallelujah. The good thing is anything you thank God for multiplies at the end. Now, if I'm going to about today, or call it tomorrow Monday, and I tell them 12 midnight today, the city will gather. Amen. We went to a place, we gave them only five days' notice. We had 72,000 people. Well, you know, the, everything you genuinely thank God for multiplies. Anything you murmur and complain about reduces until it becomes non existent. Wake up. It's your turn for a change of story. Is somebody blessed? Let's get into it. Thanksgiving will lead to multiplication and glorification. Your business should be set free by you today yeah. by recognizing that your lifestyle of thanksgiving is the custodian of your desired breakthrough in business. If you won't do it, you have a long way to go. Number two, covenant force of breakthrough is seeking first the advancement of the kingdom of God. Seek him first. You see, the reason why many people are very suspicious is that they think that that is to bless the church, that is to bless their pastor. He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you, not to the church, not to the pastor. What are all these things? Things to eat, things to wear, where to live. All these things, all these things. All the glory with which God decked Solomon, all these things shall be added to you. All these things, not to the church, not to the pastor. No. To you. To you. Not to anybody else. All these things. Sweatless triumph. Stress-free breakthroughs. Amen. All these things will be added to you. Not some. Not most. All. All things that are made for life and godliness shall be added to you for free. All. By seeking first. Now, we saw this story of the woman, the widow of Zarephath, in chapter... 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 13 to 15. He said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of meat. Elijah said to her, and the woman said, Look, I'm just gathering wood to eat my last meat so that my son and I can die. He said, uh, Make for me first. And as she responded to make for him first, he said, Thus said the Lord, until the day send rain, the day God sends rain back to the earth, your pot of flour will never be exhausted, and your cruise away will never fail. Now, that is 
six months into the farming of three and a half years. So she was feeding fat for three and a half years from heaven supplies. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Until the day the Lord brings rain back on the earth, you'll be eating for free by making for me in first. So when you seek first the kingdom of God, all the things that others are dying to get are freely added to you. Amen. Freely added to you. Amen. Freely added to you. Now, in Psalm 102, coincidentally, verse 13 to 15, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yet the said time has come. For thy servants take pleasure in the stones of Zion and favor the dust thereof. Therefore the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the ends of the other glory. Fearful favor. In return for your favoring the things of the kingdom as a priority. Many are living witnesses here. Well, your witness is going to increase. So seek it first. So you see it in the widow of Zarephath's lifestyle. You saw it also in the life of Peter. In spite of his frustration, push a little to the waters. So I won't be overrun by the pressure. And she did. And sat down there. No more money, no complaining, I believe. And what Jesus was done, he said, look, now, cast your name to the deep for a draw. He minded Christ first. And Christ minded him next. When you seek his kingdom first, you have committed him to your own next. His own first, then yours next. Until you make him first, yours is not in view. Yours is not in view. Until you make him first, yours and mine are not in view. You make him first. Make room for him first, then your room will be next. Hear what he said in Psalm 35 and verse 27. He said, Let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified. We take at pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Serving God makes God take, take pleasure in your affairs. And in the name of Jesus, it will be known from today that God takes pleasure in your matters. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Seeking first the advancement of the kingdom of God is one of those covenant vital forces of unending breakthroughs. Your breakthrough shall not know an end. And like we are all aware, you do that on the prayer altar, serving the interest of the kingdom on the prayer altar, like Anna did. Luke chapter 2 verse 37, serving God with prayer and fasting daily. Just serving God, praying thy kingdom come. Let the unsaved be saved. Let the saved be established in the faith. Let the sick among the brethren be healed. Let the troubled be liberated. Jesus set free the captives. You are praying. And then, of course, you're on the go with undying passion for the lost. And, of course, you are given to the cause of the kingdom. All this put together will put you on top and ever increasing heights in your business endeavors. Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. It's important for us to know that the first American billionaire in history was a committed Christian, John D. Rockefeller, a diehard tither, a major promoter of the kingdom. He once gave $140 million at a time to the education fund of his church. 140 million dollars. Many will beat that here. I said, Many people here will beat that. Many people here will beat that. 
this humble man was appointed warden of the church three times in his lifetime in charge of keeping the doors closed and opening the doors when it's time at his height may you never turn your back on God who promotes you is it a risk don't try it number three vital force we're looking at of breakthrough is being able to see the realities of our breakthrough from the world you are able to see what God has reserved for you as far as breakthroughs in life is concerned open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law there are things you see here that will just set you on the path of unending breakthroughs in life Psalm 119 verse 18 open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law if you know the meaning of this Matthew 11 11 you'll be all out for it in your life Jesus said I said to you among them that are born of women there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he the least of us is greater than the greatest in the Old Testament now what that means is greater than Abraham yes he was born of a woman greater than Isaac yes who became the envy of the ruling power of his days greater than Jacob yes who became a nation from being a person greater than Daniel yes and the king bowed down and worshiped Daniel for the depth of insight that God granted him he was relevant to the government of Babylon for 65 years greater than Daniel greater than Shera Meshach and Abednego indestructible this right now for there's a blessing in it I can tell you this no force from hell shall succeed to destroy your life nor destroy your business endeavors of all born of women there has never risen one greater than John the Baptist we're talking of Nehemiah a jackie for God walking for this without putting off his dress night and day Greater than Gideon, greater than Gideon, who smote the Amalekites as one man, the Midianites as one man, as one man from a no background, from a zero background. Of all born of women, there has no reason one greater than Jody Baptist, greater than Deborah, who could dare what lions can dare. Of all born of women, now this is the kind of destiny redemption has brought you and I into. You won't miss it. Amen. You won't miss it. Amen. One day I saw in my Bible that if you do what I tell you to do, I will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And the Lord said to me, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. I said, Lord, I'm interested. I said, well, then whatever I tell you to do, do it. That's why I put my entire being in anything he says. Anything he says, I put my... In. Because he told me, 1984, we were all below sea level. I was below sea level. I mean, I was below sea level by human consideration. But I had them tell me, he told me directly, there's a place for you on top. And that's what redemption offers you. We are all a citizen on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are all on a hill. Yes. All of us. But how do you get there? Whatever I tell you to do, do it. That's the only sense of Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 13. Whatever it is, do, do, do it. Do it. It has the capacity to set you above all nations of the earth. Amen. Oh, not some. All nations. All nations of the earth. By doing what it tells you to do. He has told you a few things this morning. Will you do it? And doing it lies your future. What we know does not change us. Is what we do with what we know that does. Okay, you 
know you have to repent to be saved, but now you won't repent. Will you ever be saved? No. The next one we're looking at is among the covenant force of breakthrough is corporate tithing. Some can get very angry with me, but that's the truth. Every truth of scriptures is valid for all times. Valid for how much? And is applicable to whosoever is interested. Valid for all times. The word of the Lord liveth and abideth forever. Every truth of scriptures is valid for all times. And is applicable to whosoever is interested. You know, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believes in him should not pray, but have everlasting life. There is no, God does not force any blessing on anybody. He leaves you to make a choice. I live before you live on death, blessing and cursing, choose life. <laughs> God does not force his blessings on nobody. It's a choice. Are you interested? I want to open over your business. The windows of hell. Are you interested? Oh yes, then go into title. September 4, 1987, the Lord spoke to me on corporate title. I never read from any book. I never read from any book. It turned the fortune of our ministry forever. Amen. Turned it eternally. Amen. This is a major economic force in this country today. Yes, turned our fortune supernaturally. Now, listen to me. I've never called any member of this church on any need of the ministry since inception. Since what? Inception. You know, they are talking. No, we, we have been like that. There has never been any caucus meeting till forever for any project in this church. That now let's meet all these uh, timber and caliber, let's come. We are all timber and caliber. Yes. You may not see it. Christ is in, inside every one of us. Glory. That's the greatest timber. Hallelujah. It's inside every little child of God. It's inside you. So you are a major force to reckon with. Amen. 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 The one in you is greater than the one in the world. Yes, sir. Corporate titan is a mystery for unending breakthroughs in business. And I'm telling you the truth. You won't beg nobody to get a job. Nobody will have any capacity to ask you for bribe. Amen. <laughs> because God's presence and blessing is just all over you. They, they are scared of you. Amen. Amen. Not one dime has gone from this place to anybody. Government. Parastata, all the robbers that are in power, wherever they are, to ask for what? Aya. The last day you will speak. The last day. When God's presence on you, everybody stay clear. They stay, they just leave you alone. Everybody in this country, no, we won't give you a dime, even if you weep. <laughs> to give you something so you can do something. Who are you? To destroy those things, yes, to promote them, and when God blesses, nobody can cause. And I will pour blessing you that you don't have enough room to take it. Now, watch. Many people here are going into next levels now. Yeah. Three hundred and eighteen men went to war and came back with the spoil. So it wasn't Abraham's personal tithe. No, it was his corporation's tithe. It was his organizational tithe. And paid the tithe of all. Genesis 14 and verse 19 to 21. Paid the tithe of all. And blessed be Abraham of God, possessor of heaven and earth. There's a realm of business that the honor of it follows you to heaven. That's the realm you're going into. I call that from Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 1 to 8. We are not tightened to a church. Mm. We are tightened to Christ. Yes, sir. He said, Here are men that die receive tithe, but they are irreceivable them of whom it is witness that he liveth. 
So the tithe is not to a church, the tithe is to Christ. Who has the key of David that opens and no man shuts? And shuts and no man opens. May the windows of heaven be open to every tithe in this church today. May your corporate tithe culminate and turn around in your businesses. And so shall it be. Thank you, Father. Somebody excited? Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Remember, all the tithe of the land is the Lord's. Leviticus 27 verse 30. All the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It shall be holy unto the Lord. In Matthew 23, verse 23, talking to the Pharisees, he said, Want to use scribes and Pharisees? For you pay the tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. This ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Jesus, they are validating the place of tithe under the New Testament. Can I hear your amen? You are going to see wonders. Yeah. You are going to see wonders. Yeah. You are going to see wonders. Yeah. May you receive grace for continuity in your covenant work with God. Yeah. May you receive grace for continuity in your covenant work with God. Yeah. Again, all of these things target you for a change of story. It doesn't target the church, it doesn't target your pastor, it targets you for a change of story. Lift up your right hand and thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. If anything got across to you, thank God for the word. No more frustration, no more stagnation, no more business and career failure. Thank God for the word. You now know what to do. No more complaining, no more murmuring. You now know what to do. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Very quickly this morning, before the prophetic blessing, you are here. You are not born again yet. I'd like to pray with you. Wherever you are, you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to be saved. You want to be born again. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Everyone that wants to give his or her life to Jesus, please stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Amen. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You can't command breakthrough until you are born of God. You can't command breakthrough until you are born of God. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and be blessed as you do in the name of Jesus. Remain standing. Remain standing. Somebody needs to get up. Get up right now. I want to pray with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, at the same time, there are, please remain standing. There are people here that need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Come back to the fountain of life. And be free from your dry seasons. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Remember, spirituality is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. If you want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet and I pray with you at the same time. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand. A double minded person shall still be in all his ways. Let, the, let not, that man think he shall receive anything from God. Please stand. Now, everyone standing both in the first and second call, please move to the nearest eye to where you are. Move to the nearest eye. The officials are beckoning to you. I'll be praying for you there. Are you glad that next Sunday is Easter? Yeah. Amen. Everyone's grave that is yet to open must open on Sunday. Any aspect of anyone's life that has been forced into the grave must come out next Sunday. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Easter is always a grave opening service. It doesn't matter what is tied and held you down. 
the power of God will break them open and you will come out. As the graves open, all the dead of the saints came out of the grave and appeared to many. God is bringing you back to the limelight. You will not be kept in the pit anymore. Everyone in the pit shall be coming out in grand style. So come prepare. It's a celebration service. We call it Easter celebration service. We are celebrating the resurrection of Christ, which is our resurrection. Amen. He said, because I live, you shall live also. Because the grave could not hold him bound, he can't hold us bound. We are coming into true liberty by the power of his resurrection. Now, everybody standing for prayers, please bow your heads for one minute. Lift up your right hand. And pray this simple prayer of faith after me, saying, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again, that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up. Be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. I cover every one of you today with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered till the day of his appearing. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. You shall run this race to the end. You shall not fall down the journey. You will live a triumphant life on the earth and eternity with Christ in heaven. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Amen. Be reminded of Believer Foundation class that holds every Monday and you go for only two times, 6 to 7.30 p.m., We'll get in touch with you today to let you know which one is nearest to where you live. Shall we all rise, please? Now, pick your points of contact right now from that floor. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. This is a breakthrough family. And as a member of this family, you are declared a breakthrough entity today. Yeah. This is a breakthrough ground. Everything here works. You have placed that point of contact on this ground. Everything begins to work in your life from now. Yeah. Now, you have heard the breakthrough word this morning. And if you choose to believe those words, you'll be empowered to become what has been declared. From now, I decree that your businesses and careers begin to experience new dimensions of breakthrough. <laughs> begin to experience from now new dimensions of breakthrough. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. <laughs> if there be any siege of the wicked on your business, I command them broken today in the name of Jesus. If there be any spare cast on your business or career, I command the spares back to the sender. <laughs> if any witch, an agent of the devil, or any agent of the devil, is after or is against your breakthroughs in your business and career, I command them judged today. Beginning from after this service, your breakthrough testimonies begin. As soon as you leave here today, new doors are opening to you. This new week is declared your breakthrough week. This season is declared your breakthrough testimony season. Everyone on the line for miracle job, I decree the delivery of your desires. Every dying business, I command you, bounce back to life again. Every struggling business, your struggles are declared over. 
in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Never mind where you are now. Just see where God is taking you to. When we were 40, 50, I saw clouds. Why? Everything with God grows. Everything with God grows. Everything linked to God grows. May you receive grace to maintain your link with God. Now, more money and complaining over your business is over today. More money and complaining over your career is over today. In Jesus' precious name. And so shall it be. Watch out. You have entered a new season. You have entered a new season. You have entered a new season. Your enviable destiny will start speaking. Your prosperous destiny will start speaking. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom will remain your delight forever. You'll never turn your back on God any day. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now lift up those materials. I declare your business is blessed. I declare the works of your hands blessed. And I declare your lives blessed. So shall it be. Lift up your two hands to heaven everybody. Together let us share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, everyone. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now before our exchange, please listen to this. Operation Take Your Church for Christ enters its eighth week today. Please be awake and make the most of this season. Now all the youth in the house... No one is permitted to miss that camp meeting. Be there. It will be for your transformation. All parents ensure that you allow them to come in and be sure they are there. Jesus is Lord. It's my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen, no ears heard, shall be the order of the day in my life this year. Congratulations. Congratulations. 